Good morning, welcome back. Josh, the driving instructor here, and today we have a very special guest. It's Twonks. Do you want to say hello, Twonks? Hello, guys. Twonks has a big channel on the game Ark, so if you're into computer games at all, this may be the guy for you. If you want to have a look at his channel, it is in the link just at the bar right now. Have a look there, and you will be astonished. If you're not into games, watch this, and you may very well soon love the games. So today, we're doing a reverse parking video, okay? There's two main methods of reverse parking. You've got what I like to refer to as the three-bay method, the three-line method. Uh, this is a very standard method of learning. It's great if you're a, a learner. Um, as it's nice and easy. It's got a really clear formula. But it's not so good if the car park isn't a perfect rectangular shape or if you've got a slight angle involved. And to be honest, once you've passed your driving test, nobody tends to use this method of parking. So we're gonna jump straight in with the other method, which is a 45 degree angle. This is the method that mum and dad and everyone you really know will tend to use just because it doesn't require uh, the perfect car park. It doesn't require three lines and it's very easy to get your car in the bay while checking behind you, not relying so much on the mirrors. Now Twonk, Twonk, you haven't done any bay parking before, have you? No. So we're gonna see today how quickly Twonk can go from zero parking to hero parking. So first we're gonna break this down step by step. I'm gonna have a chat with Twonks now. We're going to discuss the step by step of what we actually need to do, and then we'll have some real examples of how you actually can do this. Okay, Twonk, so on your driving test, any maneuver, what are the sort of key points that the examiner is going to be looking for when you're actually doing your, your parking? Any parking maneuver. Looking over your shoulder, your blind spots. Excellent, yeah. So actually observations is absolutely huge. You're not looking at front, that's not where the information is. The information's all behind you or to the side. So that's where you're going to want to be looking at least 90% of the time. Where else might you be looking? Rear view mirror. Okay, not bad, yeah. But when looking in your rear view mirror, you can always normally see behind you yeah. what you'd be able to see there. So anywhere else we might be able to use to help us do the parking side mirrors excellent yeah so the side mirrors probably 10 to 15 percent of the time you're going to want to be looking in those side mirrors to help guide you into the space but only 10 to 15 percent because the important thing is we aren't running anyone over or any other vehicle uh, so we need to make sure that we are looking behind us and around we've got to build that 360 degree picture at all times so is there anything else the driving exam is going to be looking for while you're actually doing your driving test maneuver um clutch control Clutch, clutch control, absolutely right. Amazing clutch control is so important. You know, you're showing the examiner fast, fast maneuvers are not good. That's not showing control. Slow control of the car with really good clutch control. That's showing the examiner you know exactly how to control that car and the car's not controlling you. Okay, so now we're gonna have a look at the step by step. So with this particular maneuver, what we need to do is the first thing we need to do is position the car next to the bay. So our car's here, so we pick a bay. So which bay would you like today? Um, go for that fourth one, I guess. Fourth bay down there. So with this particular maneuver, you actually want to position the car next to the bay, not on the opposite side of the road, actually nice and close to the bay. Next, you're going to want to position your car so your shoulder's actually in line with around the middle of the bay. This doesn't have to be exact, it's just to give you a bit of an idea. You don't have to focus on this paramount, it's just to give you a, a slight reference point with where to start. Step three from here, we're going to full lock the wheel away from the bay. Once we full lock the wheel, we're gonna do that 360 degree look around the car, over the shoulders, right the way around, start building that picture. Step four, we're going to then slowly move the car away from the bay, looking over our right shoulder. So what we're aiming for is our rear wheel to be approximately a meter past the final line of your bay. Once the wheel's passed there, we're going to stop the car there. We're then going to full lock the wheel the opposite way, and we're then going to do our safety checks again, a good 360 picture, build that picture all the way around the car. Now, there is lots of talk about dry steering, and yes, it is good to be aware that dry steering isn't great for the wheels because essentially you're scraping rubber without moving at all on the hard concrete or tarmac. I personally am not too bothered in this car, and for me, it's more important that the learner actually learns how to get the car in the bay successfully every time. Just to make you aware, if this is your car, you could damage your tires, if you continuously dry steer. To not dry steer, you've just gotta make sure the car's slightly moving, but today we're not going to worry about it, are we, Twanks? No. Now the key point is to start reversing the car into the bay, and to do this, we're gonna look over our right shoulder, and we're just going to use that back tire and that side mirror to guide our car into that bay. We're gonna to continue to reverse back 
maneuvering the wheel to make sure our car's nice and central in the bay if possible. And when we feel that the car's almost straight, we're gonna start looking ahead down the road and we're gonna pick an object. This could be a car, this could be another bay, this could be a lamppost, it really doesn't matter. You're just looking for something to line your car up with. Now this is far easier when you're actually looking ahead rather than looking in your mirrors because your mirrors aren't perfectly straight, they're not perfectly flat, which means they can often ski with your view and make you think you're straight when actually you're not. Have you got any questions so far, Twunk? No. Nope. You happy? Yeah. Are we gonna go for it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Finally, when you finish that maneuver, really important that you pull that handbrake and put the car into neutral to secure the car and show the examiner that your car is now secure and you've finished the maneuver. But for finish the maneuver. <laughs> okay, let's have a go. All right, you ready? Yeah. Okay, so first attempt, let's go. So can you remember, what was the first step? Um, getting your back right tire on the third line. Very close, very close. So, so the first step was to position the car in the center of the bay and line your shoulder up with around the middle of the bay. That was it, yeah. Is that all right? Yeah. So let's have a go when you're ready. <coughs> That'll do. Cool. Into first. Perfect, so the step one is done. We are now positioned with the shoulder approximately in the middle of the bay. As I say, this doesn't have to be exact. It's just to give you a slight reference point. The car's also positioned nice and close to the bay, not on the opposite side, because now what we're gonna do is turn away from the bay, giving us a nice big angle to help us easily slide into the bay without much, too much turning. Are you ready? Yeah. So, so step two is full lock the wheel away from the bay. Perfect. Now we're going to slowly move away from the bay, checking the car parks nice and clear while looking over our right shoulder, glancing over that right shoulder until that back wheel is just past the line. All right, so stay in first, yeah? Yep. Yeah. That's it, nice and gentle. Stay off the brake, don't worry about the brake, that's it. Keep going. You can't go too fast, so don't stress it. Yeah, it doesn't have to be exact, that's the beauty of this. Going. Go further than you think you need to. Keep going. Keep going. That's it. I'll do stuff about that. That's beautiful. Perfect. So now we're approximately a metre from the bay, would you say? Yeah. What sort of angle would you say we're at? Uh, 45 degrees. Yeah, around 45 degree angle. We're not into the bays in front. So we're at a nice angle. Um, we're a good metre from the bay. Because remember, the, the back wheels aren't doing the steering here. The front wheels are. So the back wheels are going to have to catch up once the front wheels start turning the opposite way. This is why we need to be at least a metre, maybe a metre and a half from the line. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. So now what's the next step, Twan? Can you remember? Look around again. Look, look around, absolutely. Yeah. Let's have a quick look around. Are we clear? Yeah. Perfect. Can you remember what the next one was? Um, full lock the other way. Excellent. Full lock the wheel the other way. We're not going to worry about dry steering. Perfect, we're full locked, we're happy. Yeah. One more quick look around. Good. Brilliant, clear? Yeah, clear. Can you remember where you look now? Um, no, is it that mirror is very useful, yep, yeah, but where else can you It'll look? Right That's it. So if you start looking over that right shoulder and start reversing slowly, and just try and guide that car into that line. That's absolutely perfect. So straight away, you've got that in yeah. the first time. Have you ever done this before? No. Are you sure? Yeah. You're having me on? No. <laughs> okay, so straight away, first time's got that straight in. And that's because we're, it was all in the preparation. As they say, the wood chopper spends a lot longer cutting his ax than he does chopping down the tree or something like that anyway. But anyway, it's all in the preparation. So if you prepare the car right, it's gonna make life a lot easier. Now, we've stopped here because we're almost, would you say the car's almost straight? Yeah. How, how are you gonna decide if the car's straight, straight? Look at the, see if there's a car in front, you see if that car's straight or Yeah, we, we haven't got a car in front in this no. case, have we? What, what have we got, what can we use? Um, we can use the middle line. We could use that middle line. What's further than the middle line? Okay the curb. Do you see that bay right in oh, front yeah, that, of us? Yeah. Perfect. Are we sort of parallel with that bay? Are we sort of straight with that bay? Um, not sort of, yeah. Sort of? It's yeah. good enough? Yeah, good enough. Okay, yeah. have you checked both your mirrors? Yeah. How are we looking? Looking 
go inside. Like a dream? Yeah. Okay. Not lines. So what do we need to do with the wheel? Put it in the... Perfect. How many turns was it to straight? One, um, one and a half. One and a half. Yeah. Perfect. It's one and a half turns from full lock to straight. So always remember that. If you ever get confused, you can full lock the wheel and then one and a half turns back and boom, straight again. So now we've just got to reverse the car straight back into the bay enough to make sure that we're not in the car park. So where are we going to be looking, Twunks? And the uh, back windscreen. Perfect. Absolutely. Back windscreen. So we could be looking in the mirrors around 10% as well, just to give us a gist of what sort of time we should be looking behind us. Because at the end of the day, there is no information in front at all. It's completely pointless looking ahead because we're going that way. Yeah. Okay. So let's go. Okay, so we're going back. We're not sure if we're fully in the bay. The beeper on the car's going, so what do we use to guide us from here? The easiest thing to do, if, especially if your car's got a beeper like this, uh, parking sensor, the best thing to do is have a look at the end of the white lines on the bays on either side, and just try and judge if you think your bonnet's inside those white lines, because if it's not, you're still in the car park. What do you think? Um, bring down this mirror over. So you see those white lines next yeah. to you? Now I can go a bit further yeah. back. Until it goes yellow, then don't stress it. Keep going. Keep going. There you go. Looks good. Looks good to me. And that's absolutely perfect. You've finished it off with the handbrake and neutral to show that the maneuver is now finished. We've made sure we're inside the end lines, so parking maneuver is finished. Okay, so that's how you do it if you're doing it on the right way. Now we're going to have a quick go at doing it on the left side bay. So again, what was the first thing? Can you remember what the first positioning was? Look around. Oh no, position your right, your shoulder to the middle of the bay. Excellent. Okay, so when you're ready. How's that? Yeah. Cool. Okay. Then we're going to turn away. Good. Step two was to full lock the wheel away from the bay. Then step three. Look around you. Good, excellent. Make sure you keep looking around that car park the whole time because cars are really quick. Okay, so now the car is angled again, 45 degrees angle. We're approximately a meter away from the end line of the bay. We full lock the wheel the opposite way. Now we're gonna reverse. Yeah. Can you see that line? Yeah. So we're actually gonna end up too close to the line this time, so if you stop there. That's it. See how we're still at an angle? Yeah. So this is good. So if you straighten your wheel up, that's it. And if you go straight back now, that, that'll still take you into the bay. Even if you go over the line, it's not world ending yeah. at all. But you've got to look behind you now at the same time. That's it. That's it, man. Keep an eye on Stop there. There you go. Now you see you've gone inside the line? Yeah. So now we need to bring the back end this way, don't we? So it'll be that way. Yeah. yeah. Full lock again. Yeah. And then looking ahead, you decide when you're straight. Look ahead, try and use this line here. How do we finish it off? Look around. Oh. There we go. Handbrake and neutral. Fantastic, well done. So remember, the key rules are really good clutch control. Got to keep control of that car at nice and slow speed. Making sure that we're looking behind us at least 90% of the time. The examiner wants to see that you're looking behind you at least 90% of the time because this is the only time the examiner is going to get to see how you're going to reverse. So even if you know there's nothing around you at all, if you're reversing, you must be looking behind you to show that examiner you are a safe reverser. So Twonks, what was easy, the three line method or this method I just showed you? Yeah, the method you just showed me. Really? Definitely, yeah. What, why was it easy? What did you prefer about it? Uh, how fast you can get it in. You don't have to mess around with the wheel. You can get it in in like two, like two turns. So it was a lot less faffing, yeah, was that? Yeah, faffing, yeah. Did you find it easy to actually line your car up and get it in? Yeah, it's easy to line up with the, like say a car in front of you or an object or a line. Wow. Did you find that sometimes that you know when you've been learning in the past that you struggle with which direction to turn the wheel? Yeah, the right hand side probably the weakest 
one left right. I can get in. Did that help by doing it that way because yeah. there was less turning involved? Yeah, a lot easier. Okay, yeah. brilliant, absolutely brilliant. As I said earlier, if you want to have a look at Twonk's channel, it is in the link above. Uh, absolute pleasure to have you here today, Twan. Yeah, thank you. Um, have a go at both those parking methods yourself. There's loads of videos. I've got some out there on the three-line method. Also try the 45-degree method because it is a more realistic version of parking. It's great, especially for those car parks where the, the parking bays are actually at 45-degree angles where some of my learners have actually been asked to park in and the three-line method did not work for that situation. This is a far better method. Try them both, get a comment below, let me know how you get on with it. What do you prefer and why? Thank you very much. See you all soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe as always. Josh out. See you later, guys.